Mr. Antonsen. Are we rolling or what? Yeah, cheers. Cheers, mate. Are we rolling? Yeah, I'm already recording. Already recording. <clears throat> wow. And you, you look ready. You Did caught you me off guard. On, on uh, silent? No. no. I can't do that these days. <laughs> Too much business. <laughs> Actually, it's been on it's been on silence all the time. Mm. I don't reply to any phone calls. I don't reply any text messages. Nothing. You also you shouldn't. You shouldn't. I'm so um, my notes. That's a good idea, Hans Christian, because you are going to carry this episode. Woo! Wow! Like always. I feel like you have been recording in in the same shirt for quite a while now. I have. I think oh, usually it, don't, just I wear, don't I wear don't I usually wear the hoodie? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. That's the black for the black forcer hoodie. You wear that every single time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. But it's, I think last time I you... actually I had another black long sleeve. I just used black. It's because I sweat so much, so you can't really see it when it's black. But there is a bit re- variation today with with the sleeves. It looks like a bit more gray or something like that. Yeah, that's gray on the sleeves. It's nice. It's good. It's good to see. I keep it simple here as well, so I, I shouldn't be talking too much about it. You, you're sparkling, mate. I am. Yeah, I think it's the sunshine from Dubai. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's it's good. It's very very good. I try not yeah. to get too much sun. It's uh, I felt like the the first few days uh when I had my second training session of the day, sometimes I felt a bit a bit drained because I had been spending a bit of time in the sun. Not even, not even a long time, but just if I was out for like 10, 15 minutes or something, I could just feel like a bit tired uh, later on the day. So How I'm trying it? it's like a little less than 30 degrees. Okay. So it's, it's, it's pretty warm still. Um, but it's, it's super nice. Uh, the, I mean, the last few days in Denmark before I, I left here to Dubai, it was like, to be honest, I was getting kind of depressed. I mean, at 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 four every afternoon, it was just like totally dark and uh, it was super cold and rainy and windy and everything. And uh, yeah, it, it's I don't like it to be honest. But how how's it going back home? Yeah, well, it's still dark early. It's still raining. It's still windy. It's uh, it's just Danish winter time. I yeah. I like I like the cold, but yeah, I don't like the darkness. I don't think anyone really likes the darkness. No. It's, how how do you feel about training? How's how's the how's the hole in Bondi right now? Is it cold? <laughs> yeah, of course it's too cold. It's horrible. It's horrible. Like it's of course how- it would be so much nicer to train in the uh, in the heat instead. Like it, you it's like you you almost even though you're completely you're sweating and you're completely warm and everything, you still feel cold sometimes even after one hour of training because like when your shirt gets wet and it's cold in the hall at the same time it kind of it just feels so yeah terribly cold all the time the, nice. the, the problem is if you, if you just if you just stand still for like two or three minutes when yeah, you have yeah. to, to to get explained the, the next exercise or something like that you just you just freeze immediately right yeah 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 the, fir- the first round right after like a two three four minute break is it's so hard to get going again and I was like, the, the last few days uh, I practiced in Denmark before I left uh, here to Dubai, I was pra- practicing in, in Gentofte. Um, mm. And I, I, do, I do not believe the, 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 the hall was warmed up or anything like that. So I, I seriously believe it, it must have been like 15, 20 degrees, yeah. maximum 20 degrees in, in the hall. And for me, coming from a muscle injury, it, it's just, it, yeah. it, it, I, I didn't like it at all. I was super, super scared of, of, of moving around because I just felt I was super cold and that's not a good feeling to have. You want to feel like warm and ready for the practice. And that's, that's just not the feeling I, I got there. Yeah, for sure. Like the compression that I'm wearing on the legs, I have to wear that as well right now. I'm actually considering also to wear like full body compression. So also on the, uh, the upper body, uh, but yeah, haven't done it yet. I'm saving it for January or February when it's going to be even colder in the hall probably. Wow, but I, I think it's I think it's a kind of crazy that you also play with those compression tights uh, <laughs> when we play out in Asia, and it's yeah. super warm some sometimes out there. It also feels a bit warm sometimes, but it's just like it feels wrong if I don't wear it anymore, and, and I kind of feel like my muscles uh, recover just a little bit faster. Like it doesn't make a huge difference, but I just yeah, it feels wrong for me if I don't wear it now. Um, 
And yeah, with how much I so much as I sweat, I, I actually think it's an advantage in terms of I'm not dripping so much on court uh, because the compression actually mm. uh, takes a lot of the sweat, uh, yeah, away from the floor. So instead of dripping on the floor, it just goes into the compression. And that that can actually be a problem for you when we when we practice out in Asia. Sometimes if we practice in a hall in Malaysia yeah. that has no air condition, you 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 can only practice for like forty five minutes until you sweat so much that it's becoming dangerous for you to, to be on the call, right? Yeah, you're completely, I'm completely soaked and I'm driving everywhere. And uh, yeah, even sometimes, I remember one time in, in uh, Singapore where uh, I started making like footprints as well uh, because the sweat went through the uh, the shoes as well. Uh, <clears throat> I don't I don't know if you've ever been there. <laughs> they, they call it the Chinese swimming club because there is also no. like a, there is also a swimming club, but when you play on the courts, it feels like a swimming club as well, because there's so much sweat everywhere. I went there with, uh, yeah, some years ago, so Mess Conwell, he was there as well. And as you know, he's also sweating like mm. a bastard. So I'm, I'm not sure <laughs> if it was worse for him or for me. I remember my, my first, uh, world junior championships. I think mm. it, it was in Malaysia and that must've been my first time, uh, playing in Asia. And I'll, I I had a, a conversation with Morten Frost before going to the to the World Championships. Uh, he was giving me some advice about how to eat and how to 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 uh, avoid getting sick and uh, yeah. and how to deal with just being in Asia and stuff. And he, he said something like, "Do not do not practice too hard leading up to the days leading up to the event because you are going to get drained from the heat." Yeah. Um, and I was kind of like, yeah, yeah, okay. I mean, I, I can probably handle it. But I remember I, I lost to a guy from, I lost to a guy from Singapore. I can't even remember his name. But I just, uh, you know, that feeling when you hit the wall, when there's like you're just empty, there's nothing left mm. in the legs, and you're just full of, um, how do you say, it? like lactate? Yeah just full of lactate and you can't flush it out. And, and that was just the heat and the humidity that, uh, that did that to me. I, yeah. I remember I was, um, I was warming up for the, for the match. Uh, and then I warmed up in, in, in a club that had no air condition or anything, anything. It must've been like 40 degrees at least in there. Mm -hmm. And when, when it came to the match, I was just totally drained. I had no energy at all. Yeah, and at, at that point, it's already too late. Like, there's no coming back. You cannot just, uh, like, recharge, refuel in, uh, in such a short amount of time. Then you're just... It's a, it's, it's, a, it's, a crazy, it's a crazy feeling, and, and you have to experience it a few times until, mm. until you get, like, used to, to play in, in that sort of environment where it's uh, super warm and the humidity is high. I feel like the humidity is, is tricky. That definitely does something to you. It's like mm. you just have this big, uh, like heavy heavy blanket over you mm. and you can't really think you can't really see mm. everything is just getting like blurry and stuff it's it's a yeah. super super weird weird feeling um i remember i, I remember yeah go ahead yeah i was just gonna say that I, I read a fun article from the the world cup in football right now they're playing uh in qatar and all the stadiums are air conditioned so even though it's really warm in qatar they only have around i think it's 22 degrees on the pitch uh, but it was quite fun to see like a guy like Christian Eriksen. He said it was actually still kind of hard to catch your breath because the humidity, because of all the this air condition, was just <clears> crazy. <throat> uh, so it was still, even though the temperature is actually fine, it, it was still not the same feeling as if you just played in like a Danish summer where it's 22 degrees. The humidity just makes such a huge difference in terms of uh, how well you catch your breath and how, how fast you uh, you recover. Yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. It's a it's a super super nasty feeling to to play in uh, with with high humidity and you you sweat like crazy. Mm -hmm. um, I would say one 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 thing that's uh, that I feel like is a good for, good thing from from tr training in in a cold and dark place like Denmark is in the winter is is like for the mental toughness because mm -hmm. it's super super hard to get up in the morning and get through those uh, sessions where you're actually freezing most of the time even though you are, I mean working out um yeah. but i feel like it, it does something to your mental toughness and at times i was not the best at dealing with it i was like imagining going somewhere nice and warm and just being in a comfortable environment but at other times i was also quite good at getting some energy from it like we mm -hmm. we are from the north like we are <laughs> going through this uh this this crazy winter you know, I was yeah. watching Vikings and uh, Game yeah. of Thrones and stuff like that. <laughs> and the Northman is just the Northman is just tough in in a different way. Uh, yeah. And uh, 
I think I think I think you you get some something mentally from 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 going through uh, that winter there. Yeah, I definitely agree. But you don't have to worry about that anymore. So now it's only me that will be mentally tough. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you're not, yeah, I don't think even though you see some advantages, I don't think you're gonna miss it too much. Actually, if I have to be no, honest. I mean, I mean, <laughs> as as I and I guess we're going to talk about it. But as as I also mentioned in my in my video that I uploaded on my personal YouTube account, the climate is is a big big factor, um, mm. and and it's super important. It's one of the big reasons why why Dubai is a, is a, an ideal place to be, especially in, in the winter time, uh, because Danish summer is good. That's actually quite warm, uh, the recent years. Uh, but, um, but in the winter time, uh, Dubai is, is ideal. So yeah. it, it's a yeah, big factor. I completely, I completely agree. I would, I would love to have that kind of climate, uh, during winter time. It does. But really you are, you are, you are, you are, you are coming down here, aren't you? I am coming down for Dubai for a Christmas holiday. My mom invited the entire family to Dubai for uh, like a Christmas holiday. So eight days in Dubai with uh, my wife's son, my two sisters, my niece, nephew, and uh, my sister's husband and my mom. So nice. nine people in total. Wow. Yeah. So that's going to be a uh, quite nice, fun experience. We've wait, never been wait, on like a going? family holiday that, that way. So yeah, it's going to be quite Where, where are you staying? We are staying in a brand new hotel opened in September, the Hilton uh, Palm Jumeirah. So it's okay. on the on the start of uh, the Palm. Um, yeah, so it looks really nice. Uh, I'm following it on Instagram, seeing the photos. It it looks really really <laughs> nice. So my mom is nice. paying everything. She uh, inherited some money last year when my uh, yeah her mom died, and uh, so she's uh, she decided to spend the money on. Uh, like okay, creating some family memories so that's gonna be yeah amazing we okay. are we are very cool. excited yeah do you do you have time to record a podcast while while you're here or hopefully hopefully i will actually it won't be 100 percent holiday because we leave for uh, uh, malaysia on january the 6th and i'll be back on the 30th of december so i need to do some training as well um at the time where we booked the holiday i didn't know you were going to move to dubai so i've already spoken <laughs> to victor about training uh, so we'll see uh, mm. how i uh, figure it all out but uh yeah fair enough fair enough I, we will uh, we will try to uh, to get some time for a podcast as well that would be good sure or, or just just uh just a lunch or something yeah that stop we can by, do. Stop by that we can do for sure cool awesome but uh, but that was like uh, fifteen minutes um, <laughs> without even doing a, doing a, an intro. So I'll just do it here. So so we have it done. I think we, we should start Why out not? every episode with that. So to the to the people watching, uh, welcome back to another episode of the Bampton Experience. Here on the top of my screen, it says TB episode thirty nine. So so that's awesome. We are closing in on on forty, um, and and 50, 50 will be will be a big day. Uh, it will. For I will. Sure. I will wear a, a hat for that episode, like like one of those party hats, and okay, that, so that not, will, not, that will not a good. specially made one for uh, for the Bampton experience. Um, it could be the Bampton experience cap. Yeah, but, but like uh, you could get a, like a custom made one just for the fiftieth uh, episode only. Mm, mm. That's yeah. that sounds like a good idea for a merch drop, like fiftieth yeah. the fiftieth episode anniversary. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> no, but, need to look but, into uh, that. but Hans Christian, what are we going to talk about today? We already touched a bit on my situation. I guess we're going to talk about that a bit more. World Tour For Finals. Sure. Yeah. And we will also uh, talk a bit about the nominees for the Player of the Year awards for BWF Player and Pairs of the Year's Most Promising Player, stuff like that. So at the World Tour Finals, they will have this award show. So we will uh, briefly discuss that. But for sure, we need to get a bit more into uh, the big news surrounding you. And I think we should start there, right? Because you just announced the other day that you will, uh, or you have actually already left Denmark for Dubai. And you will uh, you will set up your own training system there. So I think actually I want to start there with the most obvious question. You're moving to Dubai. Victor is already in Dubai. So wouldn't it make sense that you you were just training together? Mm, yeah it maybe maybe it would make sense um i think what i want to do is is like have the practice as much as possible um for me 
um and i think i have a way of uh, training i have a way of like uh, monetizing the overall trading load that i'm going through so i would like to make it quite specific for me but obviously at at, uh, at times i need sparring partners and i need to play with high level players so i would definitely be be willing to practice uh with victor at times uh and yeah it, it would make great sense since we are the only two players uh living here in dubai um so but i i think it's i think we both have different ways of doing things um i think we practice uh in a different way um but i think still i still think that we could come together at times and and, and spar with each other uh we've been doing that for the past seven eight years and it's been going quite well uh for both of us for most of the time so i think uh, i think that would be a good idea but i would like to have like my own setup, not mm-hmm. not just following Victor's setup. I, w- I would like to have my own. Uh, uh, I think I think that makes a lot of sense as well. That was also my my thought about it. Like you guys are quite quite different, and I'm pretty sure just as you want to have your like the training focused around you and on your terms, I'm pretty sure Victor wants the same. Uh, so it would make it a bit more difficult if you were training together and had to kind of uh, compromise all the time. So I think it it makes great sense that you're like training apart, and then every now and then you can uh, you can. Uh, spar with each other i think there's there's different uh, ways of doing things uh sometimes as mentioned you 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 want the uh, sparring partners at the highest level mm. sometimes you might not need that sometimes you just want uh, the training to be totally uh about you mm. um let's say if i was to practice with uh with some high level players we would have to to, to split the time between between uh between all of us because everyone is uh is prioritized so mm. I, I think at certain t- at certain moments that makes sense to do that because then you also get the very high level and intensity but at mm. other times it would m- maybe make sense to to go like um i think something similar to lizzie Jia, where he has like guys being there only to, to spar for him mm. um that way you could be a bit more efficient with the training you might not have to train uh for for as long time because you get through the program much quicker when it's only only you uh yeah. who's who's practicing basically so i think there's there's time for for all the different ways yeah. uh and we'll see we'll see sometimes uh maybe i will be on on court with uh, with victor i wouldn't rule that out at all mm. Well, what is your plan in terms of like sparring for uh, just regular practice? So like you're you're from a system in Denmark where you are very used to doing a lot of two against one. So where you are basing your training around there are actually sparring partners, not so much multi feeding uh, where it's just a coach feeding you shuttles. So like, are, are you gonna do it a bit differently, or are you gonna fly in some sparring partners just like Victor is doing, or do you already have someone in Dubai? No, I'm I'm going to do both. Um, so at the moment, I'm I'm still coming back from my injury, so mm. it doesn't really make sense at the moment to have a, a bunch of guys here when I'm not. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm doing multi sessions, multi feeding sessions, um, because I still have a, a bit of way to go to get back to like hundred percent. So for now, it doesn't really make really make sense to have a lot of sparring partners, but that's definitely the plan. Um, mm that that i'm going to bring in different sparring partners but also sometimes i'm willing to go to asia to practice with uh with with different players out there so it doesn't always have to be here uh i'm willing to and that's also what i said in that press release that i did on my on my youtube that i want to explore like different methods obviously i have kind of like my way of doing things uh but still i'm open to to try out something else and, and practice in different environments and with different coaches, different players. So I think that's uh, that's very interesting. Um, I like to train with you guys in Denmark as well. I I, I love it. Um, um, so I'll be there as well uh, at certain times. Uh, so um, I I will be all over the place. Um, but but I'm going to have my primary base here in Dubai. Um, I actually I actually haven't moved yet. I'm I'm still uh, I'm still living in Denmark. Oh, okay. um i still i still have my apartment in denmark and um so i actually actually haven't moved yet but uh i i have a place here that i'm that i'm staying now but uh i i still have i mean i have to rent out my apartment in denmark there's all sorts mm-hmm. of rules that I, that i need to to follow yeah. um so yeah yeah that that makes sense uh, i think that one thing you said about <clears throat> you, you're open to also going to asia to different places you also said it in your press release 
uh, is the one thing I find uh, the most interesting actually about a, a project like this. And I, I couldn't help thinking about uh, the episode we did with Laksha Sen uh, during Demagoban, because I think that was basically what he said that he's been used to from a, a young age going to different environments. And he had taken a lot of inspiration from Denmark, from India and from yeah other places he, uh, he had been to England as well. Uh, I think he mentioned uh, one or two more places. Um, so yeah, I'm just, I'm a little bit uh, jealous about that part. Uh, I'm not really keen on moving to Dubai or anything, but uh, I think it would be uh, yeah, really interesting actually to, to move around a little bit and uh, discover uh, or experience different uh, training environments. I've been with Miss Punsidik in Malaysia for a week, many years ago now, and I really enjoyed that. Still remember that I got back really inspired. So I, I think that's going to be really interesting to, uh, to follow. Uh, your path in, in that way have you already set something up with uh, with other places like malaysia or indonesia or is it still just like a plan uh, in the making um one, one thing i would say is that it's obviously not ideal to to move around too much i mean mm. if, if i had to go to different places all the time i didn't know where to do my grocery shopping i didn't really have mm. a routine and and i mean there's all sorts of things that i'm still exploring and trying to figure out here in dubai i just got here like uh, like last week obviously i've been here in, in the winter time four or five times or something like that but i'm still learning how to conduct myself in my everyday life and trying trying to get it as normal as possible um so that's that's the disadvantage from moving around too much is that then you always have to be on the go uh on a new hotel room maybe not being able to cook your own food and stuff like that so there's there's definitely benefits uh, from having like a, like one place where, where you know how everything is working. So that's what I'm trying to figure out here in Dubai right now. Mm. Um, I haven't, no. I mean, my injury is basically taking all my attention at the moment. So I'm trying to organize as much as I can in terms of my calendar and where I'm going to be at, at different times and stuff like that. But I'm so focused on on my rehab so it, it's difficult to like i'm focusing on my rehab but i also have i'm just like moved to a new place and i need to figure out how, how i'm going to live this new life of mine um and also having to deal with with like planning my season uh trying to to gather the team around me where am i going to practice and with who at certain times and stuff like that so it's it's a bit stressful uh right now there, there's a, there's a lot of new impressions and and mm -hmm. things that I that, that I had to, to figure out and deal with. But yeah, it's super exciting and, and I don't doubt for one second that this is the, the right decision. But I have I have some plans with some uh, with some sparring partners in uh, in the upcoming weeks. Um so so that's going to be good. Um we we'll st we're still like closing in on the deal, if you can say that. It's not really yeah. that serious, but <laughs> but um but yeah. Uh, what, yeah. what about like building your own team with coach and physio and stuff like that? Like where are you at uh, in terms of that? In terms of that. So I've been tra traveling a around a lot. Um, I was uh, after the Denmark Open. Mm. I was in Spain. I was in Spain for two weeks, uh, mm. and I worked with a physio there, and I also worked with a uh, with a strength coach. Mm. Then then I went to to always my hometown where I am. Um, also worked with another physio and another strength coach. Um, yeah, and, and I and prior to that, I brought different people to Denmark. And uh, so I, I've really been like exploring um, mm. different opportunities, trying to figure out what is it exactly that I need from from the different uh, different um, people uh, and mm. stuff. But I, I, I'm I'm getting I'm getting there. There's still a way to go. It's a uh, I'm telling you, it's it's not super easy to to build your own team. <laughs> first of all, no. first of all, it's super expensive, and yeah. then you also need to find people who is like willing willing to live this life. And and yeah. I mean, let's say yeah, let's I, I say guess you, uh, you would you would want to have, for example, a physio. You would like to have one who is more or less with you most of the time, so you don't have to switch between different physios all the time. But you need someone who knows your body and the way your training and everything. Yeah. So it's it's not that easy to find someone who's willing to do that. I mean, that, that would definitely be the most ideal solution mm -hmm. to have like one physio mm -hmm. um, that's there all the time. And he also needs to 
to be really good at getting massage because often that is just what's needed is is to get like the legs loosened up from from yeah. from a good massage so it needs to be um and it also needs to be a, a a guy or a girl that's very mobile and do not have a lot of um how do you say that i mean if you are really tied up with with your family and 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 yeah. some young kids and stuff yeah then it's difficult to to travel the amount that that i travel around so yeah. um there, it's yeah. definitely difficult to 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 find people who is both willing and capable of uh, of living this life on the road that I'm living. But I'm doing my best to to figure it out. And and some of the occupations, something like a like a massage therapist uh, or a physio, it could be uh, like a split between uh, maybe two different that could like like take some time uh, yeah. from each other and stuff and try to make it work that way. But it would also be ideal to find someone who is based down here in Dubai, where I'm going to be most of the time. Um, yeah. So, yeah. so that, so that I, I don't have to, I mean, fly them in and out all the time, have an extra hotel room available all the time. I mean, mm. if I want to yeah. keep the expensive, uh, expensive down a bit. Down, yeah. yeah. So I, I have, I have my badminton coach, um, mm. Uh, figured out that's going yeah. to be uh, and you know him you know him very well it's going to be Joachim Persson I know him very well he was yeah. my best man at my wedding so I, yeah uh, I will have to agree. I know I know, I know that man. I know <laughs> but he's going to be he's going to be my my coach uh, so in the upcoming year he's uh he's my coach so when yeah. when we play in January I uh, highly expect him to be uh the the one sitting behind 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 the uh the court guiding me hopefully in the right direction that would be good <laughs> yeah yeah hopefully hopefully you never know with Joachim but uh I'm, I'm sure he will do a very good job at that I think one thing that Joachim has always been very good at in badminton is is using his uh, his brains I don't think he's ever been like the most gifted player or the fastest not that he's been bad in those areas but just he's never been the very best but he's uh He's definitely always found ways to, I would actually say, destroy your opponent's game. That's what uh, <laughs> he really excelled at, making uh, his opponents look terrible in court. And what did so he, what, he reach? What, what, he what, reached what, like what? top 10 in the world, right? Like six, maybe? I think it's his highest rank. I was just about to say, I think his highest ranking uh, in men's single was number six. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I mean, I played against him like years ago. Uh, mm. I never really got to watch a lot of him when when he when he was active. I know he was struggling with a knee injury, uh, mm. and he never really came back from that uh, knee surgery that he had. But just prior to that, he was doing pretty well. That must mm. have been the yeah. time where he was number six in the world. He was in the final. At, was it French Open and Denmark Open twice, yeah. two weeks yeah. in a row? Yeah, correct. I think he also made the semi-final of Japan Open one year. Okay, so, that's yeah. yeah. I mean. He is uh, obviously a very different uh, badminton player uh, than I am. Um, yeah. But I mean, K Kenneth, Kenneth is also a very different badminton player yeah. than, than I am. He was a different player than I, than I am. But I, 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 I like his, uh, I like his, uh, his mind. He's, as you mm -hmm. mentioned, he's tactically uh, super smart. And mm -hmm. sometimes it's almost getting like too complex because I'm mm -hmm. also a guy that likes to, I mean, analyze everything down to the, to the smallest details and he, mm. he 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 thinks the same way and he's yeah. thinking in 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 different ways than than the regular coach is doing and, and i'm yeah. probably a bit a bit the same so sometimes it's getting like almost too yeah, too complex i can imagine you guys having some really uh, deep conversations where you also get out of a track where you end up some place really uh yeah insane actually <laughs> definitely definitely but <laughs> Um, we, we have been, we've been talking a lot about badminton for, for many years. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I know him very well. Uh, so he, I feel like he is, uh, he, he's the, he's the right one to, to guide me here in the next yeah. phase. So we'll see, we'll see how long, long it lasts. Hopefully it will be a good, uh, good partnership. Yeah, it's interesting. It's going to be real interesting to follow. Uh, of course, it's also going to be interesting to see what happens here at home in Denmark uh, with the two best players uh, leaving the center. Uh, but I think just in, in general, this time for badminton is uh, just like there's a lot of things happening. More and more players are trying to go independent or being at least more independent from the federation. Uh, so this is just another step in that direction. And uh, even though I can be a little bit worried about the yeah the future for the Danish uh, center, I'm I'm also very excited to see this uh, development. Um, so, yeah, I, uh, I can't well, wait to see what, how it unfolds. 
I mean, well, one thing that I that I feel is 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 funny that I can't imagine that there are so many eyes on 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 me and Joachim when we get on me when when I get to to play again. Like, <laughs> and I mean, I I can't really expect a lot because I'm coming from uh, from yeah. injuries and stuff. So I just I just want to get back on court first of all, yeah. but. I can see like how it's going to be just like super quickly, whether it's a success <laughs> or not. If you lose first round in Malaysia, then it's for sure uh, really a terrible decision you made. That that's going to be like general opinion, no doubt about that. But I mean, if I do that, then I just pick up from where I left, right? So it's not, nothing <laughs> yeah, true, really changed. True. Yeah, true. Oh, that's actually not true. I was in the semifinal at the Japan Open. That's my last tournament. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So everything, everything. Uh, Less than a semifinal is 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 a failure, a big yeah. failure. Yeah, but yeah, I think ha. it's just uh, no no matter what you do, there's gonna be people that will be after you. Even if you do well, there will also be all the haters uh, saying that you are you are letting uh, letting <clears throat> down Denmark and you're uh, <clears throat> yeah. So it's it's just how it is. Everyone is entitled to an opinion, but uh, yeah, it's not that everybody's opinion really matters in the end. But I will say also that that me and Victor, I, I'm pretty sure he has the same agreement uh like i have that we are still going to be in denmark on the national training um certain periods of time and it's i mean yeah so so we're still going to to be on the practice and 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 hopefully we can uh like higher the level on the training i'm i'm, I'm sure we can um but, yeah and you will yeah. still play all the team events and you will still be picked for the european championships world championships if you qualify of course but yeah i hope you will uh, so yeah, not a lot has changed there. I think for for us, of course, it is still a big change that both you and uh, Victor has disappeared within a year. Uh, you will be here. I think the federation said in their press release like fourteen, fifteen weeks a year, and well, I guess we're used to you guys being here something like thirty five weeks. So of course it's less, but it's not nothing for sure. Not. Yeah, no, I I don't, I don't know the exact number, and I'm actually not sure how much I used to be. Obviously, there are certain rules of how much we are allowed to be uh, mm. in Denmark. Uh, well, well, once we move out of the country. Um, but um, but have you felt anything on the training? Anything like uh, how's people like handling it back home? Well, I think you haven't really been that much in training for the last uh, long period because of injuries. No. So it, it hasn't really felt very different to be honest uh because i think we've been used to it for for quite some time now i think we just before we were kind of expecting that you would come back at some point but uh, you were only back for a few weeks uh and then you got injured again right before the denmark open right so yeah in that way i don't think there's been a lot of uh change uh but it was actually quite fun because like uh, after the press release uh went out and it was official that you moved out the first training uh, right after, like everyone was just like giving 100% and it was a crazy good training. And I remember we had the exact same thing when, when Victor moved out, when it was official, like everyone was stepping up and like, we need to show that we can do this without those guys. And so I said at the end of the training, we just need someone to move out once a week and then we will just uh, train <laughs> our best. We just need some guys to come back every now and then as well. But uh, it's fun to see like, the reaction is always the same that we are trying to step up and uh, but i'm sure in a week or two it will just be like normal again everyday life um, yeah that's how yeah. it is and and that's and that's that's super good that that's how it should be and i, I remember it from when when victor went out that we we knew that we we needed to carry some extra weight now that that mm. he wasn't there and i think everyone uh, did their absolute best and i hope that people will the players will do the same and i'm sure they will uh, in in this case well, I will say though, by the time Victor got home and started to practice with us a little bit again, the level was just through the roof once again. So, but but it's it's I mean it's the it's the right mentality to to have. Now everyone has to do their absolute best. But I mean, there's plenty of good players. Rasmus is uh, arguably better than me at the, at the moment. Like he's uh, he's mm -hmm. performed well uh, in the recent tournaments, and I have and I have been very inactive. So. I mean, he's um, super good in training. Maunus is doing well. Uh, I saw he won the the Irish Open, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Le the level is still high, but as you say, of course, we will still feel the difference when you're home and when when Victor is home. It, of course, you guys are some of the best in the world. So it would be strange as well if if we could just reproduce it uh, without you guys there. It, of course, it doesn't work like that. But we need to take responsibility for our own training. It's always like that, but you just need to do it a little bit more when there's. Uh, 
less of the world class players to uh, to lean against. Uh, but one, it's fine. One, the young, the young that... guys need to step up. And you, the young guys, and you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm trying. What, I'm one... trying. One thing that I find a bit uh, interesting, and I think I spoke to Janu Janssen about it back in the mm. back in the days. It's like there's just like a natural shift when 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 the best is not there, the next one mm. takes over, and it is it is also like I remember back in 2019, Victor had a season where he was quite injured and stuff, mm. and it it, it kind of like gave more space to me, and then suddenly mm. I did very well, um, and now I don't I mean. It's only been like two tournaments where Rasmus did very good, so I don't know if you can conclude that. But now that I have not been there mm. as much for for the previous four months, five months, or something like that, mm. he's doing very well now. Uh, mm. Just recently, I mean, let's see if it yeah. if it continues. Hopefully, it will. But it just there's just something natural happening there. I don't know if it's mm. because of extra attention or that feeling of being the best also boosts your confidence a little bit. Perhaps I don't know. Yeah, it's probably a mix, but there's no no doubt we can also feel in training now that that Gimke is the top priority, no doubt about that. Where before he had to share a lot more of the attention with the uh, with you, uh, so I, I think it makes sense that the next in line will automatically get better chances at least of uh, improving a lot. And it's it's not like like you and Victor leaving is only not normal because you are you're not retiring but we are used to in the center that the best players are retiring so this this situation happens a lot it's just uncommon that it happens uh, so early that we are losing uh, yeah, some of the best players it, <clears throat> it's not uncommon that the best player at some point will uh, will stop uh, at the center so the, the next guys in line will have to take over he must uh, he must enjoy it, Rasmus now he now he can go first in every every single two against one practice yeah yeah he is definitely exploiting that no question. <laughs> He's yeah. been wanting to do that forever. Every every yeah. single time we start out doing two against one uh, sessions, he always wants to go first. And it, there's this rule that the the highest uh, ranked player kind of decides whether he go first, unless Kenneth, unless Kenneth tells uh, someone to go first. But usually it's like Victor started out yeah. uh, when he wasn't there. I started out to to kind of like try to set set the bar mm. high. Uh, mm. But Rasmus always wanted to go first, uh, mm. and so- sometimes we let him, sometimes we didn't, just to annoy him. Mm. But now he he must really enjoy to to be the first guy up. Yeah, he does, and actually, we like we are often on two courts because uh, we are five or six guys, and often it's him that starts on one court, and I get to start on the other one. So for me, it's also much better. I don't have to uh, to be last in line to uh, to go. So so I actually That's have good. to thank you for moving out. <laughs> You're also, welcome. I don't. I don't have to watch you every day. That's also. Uh, that's also <clears throat> yeah, only only once once a while here on the podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Should that Should be we... uh, enough about uh, you moving to Dubai? We will uh, see how it unfolds in the future, and uh, yeah, of course, we will discuss it again when uh, when you know a bit more more about how everything is going to work for you, and when you're back fully fit. Well, when, when, once you retire, I, I might have a job for you. So. Uh... Ooh. <laughs> interesting interesting yeah stay tuned yeah let's uh let's talk a bit about the uh the upcoming world tour finals <clears throat> you didn't qualify the first thing i know <laughs> the first <laughs> thing i want to say about the world tour finals is um it has been moved from china mm. to thailand uh, it's going to be mm. played in bangkok um and First, when I saw it, it annoyed me so much because I was like, why didn't they just do that to the other tournaments um, that were supposed to be played in China? It, I mean, everyone knew that this uh, tournament wasn't going to be played uh, in China. So it, it's like it, it annoys me so much because they should have made this decision way back and just moved all the tournaments to, to some other country. And I know that there were other countries willing mm. to 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 do the tournaments instead so that's the first thing that annoys me so much about the world tour finals yeah i couldn't agree more it was the first thing i, <laughs> I thought about when i saw it was moved uh, before i actually got happy on the players behalf uh, i know anas and keep from denmark who are going were quite nervous to go to china especially if you test positive there uh, so i was happy for them it got moved but uh, yeah my first initial feeling was also just yeah so annoyed actually that we are missing out on, on two events just because they uh, they were trying to 
to make it happen in, in China. Because as you say, I think I think everyone knew that was never going to happen. Um, yeah. But well, at least the flight we tickets, get, we, the flight tickets yeah. to China was insanely expensive. Yeah, I heard that. I heard that. Because there's almost no flights, right? And they cannot. I think I don't think they're allowed to fill up the flights either to China. Uh, I, th I think they can only fill it up like one fifth or something like that. Yeah, some something like that. So it yeah. was, it was meant to be meant to be cancelled or moved yeah, to yeah, some some yeah, some yeah. somewhere else. Yeah. But um, but it's going to be played, and that's good. That's good for for the player to qualify. Um, I've I've seen the the men singles as of course we want to uh, to talk a bit about. Uh, I've seen the mm -hmm. the lineup there, and I was very surprised not to see first of all Lakshya Sen and Lisi Jha um, mm -hmm. amongst the eight players. I actually thought that Lisi Jha was kind of hundred percent guaranteed to uh, to qualify, but but he didn't. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm also like I haven't really been following the rankings uh, throughout the year, but I knew before Australian Open that it was uh, the final spot was between him and uh, Lu Guangzhou from China, and I think they played each other in uh, it was second round or quarterfinal. I'm not, I'm not sure. I think second round maybe. Yeah, so they were basically playing directly for one ticket for the World Tour Finals, and uh, yeah, Lu Guangzhou he uh, he ended up beating. Uh, Beating Lisa Jan, I think he made the final, right? Didn't he lose the final to Shi Yuki? I think. Yeah, he did. He did, and yeah. another another victory for for Shi Yuki. Yeah, yeah. I, I I think he's actually now the only guy uh, apart from Victor who has won two World Tour events in singles this year. I think it was some crazy stat before that that it has there had not been any multiple winners in men's singles apart from Victor, obviously, who won uh, yeah a lot. But there's been new there have been new winners of every. Super 100 to Super 1000 event, so that was uh, pretty crazy. He's back. Yeah, I'm, he's. Uh, I, I mean, yeah, I, I, I kind of knew that he was going to to be up there immediately. He's mm. he's been playing very very well, but he's been having a uh, like like some rough years. But first mm. of all, with his ankle injury, um, that he got playing against me actually, but and then also the, yeah, I don't know what to call it, but the the ban he got from 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 the mm. Chinese Federation. Um, yeah. Yeah. But he's back, and he's definitely for me to see. He's definitely a a top four player in the world mm. uh, right now. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. I think he will also shoot up the rankings pretty much uh, when they get back to normal. Um, but I think, like, just to finish off with the Li Shijia, I think it's a bit weird that we have a guy who is at the end of the year is ranked two in the world, but he's not qualified for the season-ending finals. <laughs> Like I, I know they're changing the qualifying system next year. So next year it will uh, only be the fourteen best results on the world tour that will count towards qualifying for the finals, which I think will make it a lot better. Right now it's just every single world tour event will count, so we can just keep on adding points. Um, because like for me, like the season-ending finals to me it should be for the eight best players of the year, and obviously because he's number two in the world, this year he's one of the best players from this year. Uh, so to to me it's. It's a bit weird that he uh, he didn't qualify. I don't really like the uh, the way the, the qualification rules work in uh, in badminton. It's so different from tennis. As, again, uh, I I like their rules much better. No, it it's like um, it that that rule only benefits the players who's just playing absolutely everything. Hmm. And yeah. um, I don't know. I mean, it feels like that rule set kind of like um, I don't know. It forces is the right word, but it might f force people to play way too much and risk mm. getting injured and stuff just because they want to qual qualify for the big money tournament. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's good that it's going to be changed to the 10 best results that count. For 14, 14 um, best. Yeah, for the 14 best? Yeah. So For the World Tour Finals? For the World Tour Finals, yeah, the 14 best. And you can maximum have three. <laughs> uh, that's what I heard, at least. You can maximum have three. Uh, Super 100 counting. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I we'll have to wait and see. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not very sure about that. I also heard that the your world ranking would would be 14 tournaments. Um, okay. And the World Tour finals uh, would be the best 10. But I'm, hmm. I don't want to to spread fake news here. I'm not 100 percent sure about that. I just heard some some rumors about it. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm also in doubt. Yeah. <laughs> As we're talking don't, about it. Don't uh, don't listen to us, guys. We uh, no, don't know no, any, no, anything, no, no. basically. 
No, 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 no. I'm just trying to scroll through my uh, phone here because I think I have it right here. Yeah, a maximum of 14 World Tour events can count. No more than three World Tour 100s. Okay, so so it's it's been done. I mean, the rules the rules are set. Yeah, but that's for the World Tour finals. I don't know about the world okay. ranking. I think that will still work as normal with the uh, with ten results. Okay. Yeah. Um. So so about the uh, about the the World Tour finals. I think mm -hmm. it's a uh, it's an an interesting lineup. Um, for for the men's singles, we have Kodai. Mm -hmm. uh in in amongst the eight who has been doing very well uh lately he's been all over the place i feel like always been i mean amongst the the last eight in every tournament i feel like yeah. also been reaching uh some semifinals very um, consistent. we have uh prano in there who's been having a, a great year as well mm -hmm. uh the two indonesian players christian genting Lo Ken Yu, Singapore, uh, and then uh, Lu Guangzhou from uh, from China, and then Victor, of course. Um, I don't know the I don't know where they are going to play. I obviously don't know about the uh, the conditions, but mm. obviously we have to to mention Victor as the big favorite. There's no doubt about it. But um, but Lo Ken Yu showed that he could he could do some damage uh, at the Denmark Open when the Shell were were was super fast. Mm. So. Um, yeah, yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's not the arena we played uh, uh, Thomas Cup and uh, also Thailand Open in. I think it's the arena that Thailand Masters was played in uh, the year before that. Uh, so I think it's a little bit smaller, uh, but I don't know if it's a fast or, or slow arena. Uh, I think if it's a slow one, Victor is yeah once again the uh, the overwhelming favorite to uh, to win. It's like I think it was interesting to see. Um... Shiyuki versus uh, Kodai here in the Australia Open. I think uh, Shiyuki won like twenty one nineteen in the deciding mm. game, yeah. and 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 you you could maybe argue that 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 uh, that he is the guy right up after Victor at the moment. Uh, Shiyuki um, mm. after winning the Denmark Open, defeating the Sijia, he he could be the second best in the world right now. Yeah. And and then you compare that match to the one Victor played against Kodai in French yeah. Open, where it's like <laughs> yeah. two players it's... from from a different planet uh, yeah. in, in that match. So yeah. that just tells me Victor in that sort of environment where it's super slow, he's 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 on another on another level at at the moment. Mm -hmm. I feel like. Yeah, and I also feel like like even if he drops a match in the group stage, Victor, he will probably still qualify for. Uh like for the semifinal. So it will take more than just one off day for him. It, the off day will have to be in the semifinal or, or final. So I think it, it the format is, is better for, for Victor as well than it is for, uh, yeah, for the opponents actually. But there is, um, there is some, it, it's, it's a strong lineup. It's, uh, it's not, it's not what you would have expected perhaps, um, before mm. this, uh, before this year started, you, you maybe would have, um, Thinking that Momota would be there, maybe myself as well. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but I think guys like Pana and Kodai, um, Cho Chin Chin is just also there. He's he's always oh, he's, there, like yeah. a super 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 yeah. like a steady. But yeah, for um, sure, Pana, Lu Guangzhou, and Kodai. I think those three are, are quite unexpected in the uh, in this group. And then um, for 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 the for the men's doubles, uh, mm -hmm. obviously I I notice our friends Kim and Anna's in there. It's going to be interesting to to cheer for the boys, yeah. our compatriots. Um, two of two of the few Europeans, I think the, them and Tom and Delphine from France in the mm. mix, and then uh, yeah, Victor of course. That's the the only non Asian uh, representatives at the World Cup oh. final. So that's not a lot. That's not a lot, no. But then there's. It's it looks like a very strong lineup in in the men's doubles. I don't know if there's any like huge surprises or anything. Um, maybe what about Lee Lee and uh, and Lee and uh, and Wang Chilling Wang, who won the Olympics. They're they're not in. Yeah, at the start of the year, I think there. we would have expected them to qualify, but with the uh, the injury to uh, to Wang, uh, I think it's yeah. It's safe to say it's because of that they didn't qualify. They really struggled to reproduce the same form, and he's been injured a lot. We saw, uh, uh, yeah, we saw his partner play with a different guy in the uh, French Open and uh, high low as well. Uh, so 
yeah, I don't think they really had a fair chance of, of qualifying because of that injury. He's been singing a lot instead, uh, Wayne. Yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah. Yeah, I've been seeing some clips here and there. He's a yeah. He's 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 a star. I like it yeah, a lot. Yeah, 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 he's yeah. transitioning into be uh, being a, a superstar out there, so it's yeah. uh, it's good. Yeah. Um, just on on another note, now I just uh, scrolled through the 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 women singles. Uh, yeah. Is there something going on with Anse Young and the federation and her federation? Yeah, I've only read briefly about it. I, I think there are some rumors that they forgot to to enter her for, I think it was a Denmark and French Open she didn't play. Because uh, mm. first, like, the official explanation was that she needed uh, some rest and, uh, yeah, stuff like that. But then a rumor started going that they they forgot entering her. And then there's been a lot of rumors about some trouble between them. Um, so I, I'm okay. not sure what's what's up and down in that case. Um, so, yeah. I don't really have any any facts, but she is playing the World Tour Finals, um, and she will for sure, of course, be one of the favorites uh, to win it. I think. Uh, did she win Australia? Or did she make the yeah. final? She won. I think yeah. she won. Yeah, yeah. So I, I guess she will be one of the favorites to uh, to win it. I think in the women's singles you have Chen Yufei, Tsai Su Ying, He Bing Jiao, Yamaguchi, and An Se Young. I think those five are. It like it's it's probably like a toss-up who's going to win it between those five. I think Mariska from Indonesia, uh, even Achenok and uh, Busanan, I think they will have a hard time actually winning the event. That's that's going to be tough. It's it's a strong it's a strong lineup in the, in the women's singles, so that's, that's for sure. Definitely. definitely. It'll bring, it, it, it's, not, it's not next week, it's the week after, right? Uh, yeah, must be the week after. Okay. I'm I'm actually in doubt. They moved it forward a week. Yeah, so it's actually, actually I think, think it's it was, next week. I, I it's think it's next week. week. It's it is, next it week. Is, yeah, because yeah, they moved it forward a week. It was supposed to be the week after, but they moved it. Forward. Interesting. I'm yeah. looking forward to 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 follow the the tournament. It's it's always fun to watch the World Tour Finals with the with the groove stage and everything. Yeah. So yeah. that's uh that's that's kind of fun. So. Um, yeah. I would have loved to participate, but uh, not this time. I will. Uh, I don't I'll think watch. you were really close this time. <laughs> no, not not really. No, I still mm. feel like I still feel like the defending champion, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, did you win it last time? Though it was played. No, last time. No, it's last two time, years ago. Oh, last yes, time was on was on Bali. Um, yeah, 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 that's right. I think I had a I had a slight slight chance to qualify, but then I withdraw from uh, the second tournament on Bali, and then kind of like, yeah, gave gave the opportunity away. Uh, I think Rasmus qualified then uh, instead yeah, and of. and then he then he got injured and had to pull out actually. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a mess last time. I think I think like yeah. two two players in that group had to pull out. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it was him and probably Momota as well actually. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah, with his back injury. So, um, yeah. so that will be that will be interesting. I'm sure the fans will be thrilled to to watch the World Tour Finals. Uh, I will be as well. I know you will be as well, Hans Christian. I will probably watch more than you, but uh, we will for sure talk about it after the World Tour Finals have been played. We will uh, talk about what's been going on, and if you haven't watched the matches, I will tell you what's been going on. I will. I will. I'll. I'll, I'll promise you that I will stay updated. Uh, I feel like that's my. Um, what's the word that I'm looking for? I'm Obligation sure. as oh. as one of the hosts on the Benson experience to True. to stay informed True. about what's uh, what's going on. Yeah. Um, to the questions that we have been receiving on the, um on Instagram, I feel like we have been talking about actually most of them because there's so mm -hmm. many about the Dubai situation uh, yeah. and, and my setup. So there's one thing I want us to talk about still. Yeah. That is the Player of the Year awards in Dubai. Yeah. Did you see the nominees? In Dubai? Oh, not Dubai. Uh, in uh, in Thailand. So okay. I just had Dubai in my mind. I also played the World <laughs> Tour Finals in Dubai. So that, that's why I was uh, thinking about that. No, no. In, in Thailand. They will uh, yeah, they will announce the winner of like the Male Player of the Year, Female Player of the Year, Pair of the Year, Most Promising Player, and Most Improved Player. And also a couple of para uh, prizes actually, um, but I, I think it was quite quite strange. Like this year, I was comparing the nominees this year to last year because the nominees in for female and male are Lo Kin Yu, Lisi Jia, and Victor for male player of the year, 
And for female, it's Yamaguchi and Se Young and Tai Su Ying. Uh, so it's only singles players. Uh, and I, I, I didn't really recall that this prize was for singles players only. Um, but they also have this category called Pair of the Year. Um, but they had that last year as well, and even last year there was a doubles player, and there were also four nominees in the uh, in the in the, the player of the year category. So I'm not really sure what's going on if they have changed the uh, um, like the criteria for who can win it. Um, but yeah, I guess there's not really any doubt who's going to win male of the player of the year. So it's going to be Victor, right? Yeah. I mean, I have absolutely no idea. I never really paid much attention to to that yeah. award, <laughs> to be honest. It was only because when I saw it, I was just I didn't really remember that it was uh, like only a singles player. I think one one thing that is a little bit crazy is for, like female player of the year. It's Yamaguchi and Young and Tai Su Ying, but like Chen Yufei, I think she made like eight finals this year in singles. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I don't really get how she cannot be uh, nominated. Uh, yeah, before even uh, Tai Su Ying, I don't think she's had the most amazing uh, year for her standards. Uh, that is, it's uh, rigged. Yeah, let let, it, let, let 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 that be the the the, the caption of this uh, of this podcast. <laughs> it's rigged. It's rigged. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think she she got a little bit hard done for sure. Um, another thing that's weird is that the the period they're nominated for is from. Uh, November and December last year until end of October this year. So I guess that's why, like, Loken Yu, he's nominated because he won Hilo Open, he made the final of Indonesia Open, and he won the World Championships in the final two months last year. So that counts for the award this year. So, it's, like, to me, it's a lot of a lot of weird things with this award there that I, I don't really like, actually. You don't you don't win anything from winning the award, do you? No, I think it's uh, it's uh, only like the honor, uh, which of course is also a, a great honor. It's, it's quite new actually that we have this award. It's it hasn't been there for ten years or yeah, maybe it's around that time. It's 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 rather new. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's fine. I mean, what about yeah. why why don't they make like a hall of fame or something? Do they have that? There is a BWF hall of fame. Yeah, there is. There okay. Is. Are you are you going to be in there? Do you think? <laughs> no, for sure not. For sure not. Uh, then it would be for like being a pain in the ass because I complain on social media too much. <laughs> uh, I could I could be in the Hall of Fame yeah. for that. Yeah, that's good. Uh, someone yeah. someone needs to do uh do the do the the dirty job or what do you say? Exactly. Exactly. Right. That was it all was... that I had on my paper. You can see it quickly. Oh, no more. It's um. It's been a little, little bit more than an hour. Uh, it was, it was good talking to you again, Hans Christian. Likewise, Anas. Likewise, it's good to have you at distance. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> likewise. Um, so, so let's just uh, let's just wrap it up here. Um, to to the people watching, thank you so much uh, for doing that. As always, if you haven't done it, please remember to subscribe to the Banton Experience here on YouTube. Also, follow us on Instagram. We have uh, the Banton Experience own instagram uh, page as well so um yeah like the video leave a comment all that stuff and um with that being said see you in the next episode of the bantan experience with which will be the 40th 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 episode yeah it's a difficult word thanks so Crazy. much guys see you Bye-bye. bye bye